Lesson 3.5, Model Decimal Edition. The previous videos are linked in the description if you need them. We can use base 10 blocks to model what is happening when we add decimals. We use a flat as one whole, that's 100 unit cubes. We use a long of 10 as 1 tenth, and we use one unit cube as 1 hundredth. Base 10 blocks can model decimal addition to help us find sums. We have 49 hundredths plus 34 hundredths. We combine the smaller units, so here we have 4 tenths, and we have 9 hundredths. Here we have 3 tenths and 4 hundredths. We can take one of these hundredths and put it up here to make a tenth. We regroup groups of 10. And we combine the next greater units and regroup again if needed. Now we have 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, and we have 3 hundredths. We have 83 hundredths. Some decimals are more popular than others because they represent amounts that are used quite often. We have 25 hundredths. We can think of it in terms of money. That would be 25 cents from a dollar. It would be a quarter, wouldn't it? It would be 25 cents. And 25 hundredths is equal to one fourth. Here we have five tenths. We can put a trailing zero here, couldn't we? That would be like 50 cents. Five tenths is equal to one half. Fifty hundredths is equal to half of a dollar. And 75 hundredths is like 75 cents. 75 one hundredths is equal to three fourths. That would be three fourths of a dollar. We can think of each long of 10 as one tenth of a whole. If we're adding two decimals and they're both greater than or equal to five tenths, our sum will contain a whole number. So if each of these are a tenth, we have one, two, three, four, five tenths, and we have one, two, three, four, five tenths, that's ten tenths. That's equal to one whole. When the numerator and denominator are the same, it equals one. We have five tenths plus five tenths, it's equal to one whole. We can use a 100 grid to add decimals. Each fully shaded grid equals one whole, and each column of 10 coming down is equal to one tenth, and each square equals one hundredth. If we need to add one and 64 hundredths, we have one full shaded one for the one whole, and we have six columns fully shaded for the six tenths, and we have four squares shaded that in the pink would be one and 64 hundredths. We can add 18 hundredths by shading in 18 more squares. It's equal to one and 82 hundredths. We can use different colors for each decimal add-in to help us. We can use a quick drawing to add decimals. We can use a square for one whole. We can use a line for one-tenth and a little small circle for one-hundredth. We need to add two and three-tenths plus one and nine-tenths. For the two and three-tenths, we draw two squares for the two whole and three little lines for the three-tenths. For the one and nine-tenths, we draw one square and nine little lines for the nine-tenths. Now we can regroup the tenths as one whole by circling them. That's 10 tenths, then crossing them out as we draw one whole. So 10 tenths would be equal to one whole. We can add another one whole here. Only one digit can be in each place value position. We have one, two, three, four whole and two tenths. It's equal to four and two tenths. Here we have two and 54 hundredths plus 2 and 78 hundredths. We draw our 2 and 54 hundredths by drawing two squares for the two whole. We draw five 
lines for the five tenths, and we draw four little circles for the four hundredths. We draw two squares for the two hole here, and we need seven tenths, we draw seven lines, then we need eight hundredths, we draw eight little circles. We start by regrouping the hundredths. We can see that we can make a ten here. We cross it out and add a line to the tenths. Now we count our tenths and regroup them if we can. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three more, and we'll be able to make a group of ten. That would be ten tenths. We can make another hole. We can see we have five whole, and we have one, two, three tenths, and two hundredths. And put the decimal point between the ones and the tenths place, between the five ones and the three tenths. And the decimal point belongs between the ones and the tenths place. Here we have two whole, then we have a decimal point, we have three tenths and four hundredths, that's two and thirty-four hundredths. Here we just have six tenths and seven hundredths. We put a zero in the ones place, a decimal point, and the sixty-seven hundredths. And decimal points are necessary for writing a decimal number because they don't always end in the same place value position. And the decimal point helps us to know the place values. Because the decimal point is here, we know that's the tenths place and that's the hundredths place. Because each small cube represents one hundredth, we would need one hundred of them to re represent one whole. Two and forty-one hundredths would be represented by two hundred forty-one small cubes. The two whole would be one hundred plus one hundred. That's the two hundred. Then we would have four tens, and then one for one hundredth. That's two hundred forty-one. Regrouping is very important because each place value is based on groups of ten. And this is true for whole numbers and decimals. Only one digit can be in a place value, so when we have ten or more, we regroup to the next greater place value. Mr. Kim bought two and twenty-five hundredths pounds of pecans, one and five-tenths pounds of cashews, and one and twenty-five hundredths pounds of walnuts. How many pounds of nuts did he purchase? Now we think, because the tenths and hundredths are compatible numbers, we have a twenty-five hundredths, a twenty-five hundredths, a five-tenths. We can add the amounts using mental math if we think of money and coins. We think of this as twenty-five cents, this as fifty cents, because we could add a trailing zero, couldn't we? It wouldn't change the value. We can think of this as another twenty-five cents. This would be one whole dollar. That would be one whole. Then we add the one to the whole numbers. We have a two, a one, and a one. That would be a four. We add the four and the one to get a five. We know that two and twenty-five hundredths plus one and five tenths plus one and twenty-five hundredths is equal to five whole. It's five ones. Be very careful putting your decimals in. You want them to be in the correct place. In our next lesson, 3.6, we're going to model decimal subtraction with base 10 blocks and some other methods. I hope I see you there, and I'm Hope you have a really great day. Bye.